Draft is an open source project designed to make it easier for developers working with Kubernetes to streamline their development process. I'm going to show you how you can use Draft with the Azure Container Service and Azure Container Registry. Draft has four dependencies that we'll set up in Azure. It needs a container registry, a cloud-based Kubernetes cluster, Helm, and an ingress controller for Kubernetes. The easiest way to get up and running with the Azure Container Service is with the Azure CLI. And the easiest way to get the Azure CLI is via the Azure Cloud Shell. So let's open one up from the Azure portal. So first I'll create a resource group to keep all of this together in one place. I just need to name the resource group and choose the Azure region it will be created in. We're going to use the Azure Container Registry as a private repository for the Docker containers that Draft will create for us. So I'll create a new container registry. I just give it a name and specify the resource group that the registry will reside in. Okay, let's create an instance of the Azure Container Service using Kubernetes as the orchestrator. I give the container service a name, a DNS name prefix that will be used to form the URL for cluster resources and the resource group I want to deploy this to. The Generate SSH Keys option will automatically create SSH keys and configure the resources to use them. And I specify that I want to use Kubernetes as my orchestrator. With that done, I now need to install the Kubernetes command line tool, but the Azure Cloud Shell has a bunch of popular tools pre-installed. So if I type kubectl, I'll see that it's already installed. I will need to set up the credentials that kubectl will use to connect to my new Kubernetes cluster. The Azure CLI can help me with that too. I use the AZ ACS Kubernetes get credentials command and provide the name of my resource group and ACS cluster. If I look in my Cloud Shell's file system, I'll see that I now have a hidden cube folder. This contains the configuration details that will allow kubectl to connect to my cluster. And because Cloud Shell persists my profile across sessions, this configuration information will still be there whenever I launch a new Cloud Shell. So now I can use a command like kubectl get nodes, and I'll see I have three nodes and one master. The next dependency to install for Draft is Helm. I'll use curl to download the latest version, then unpack the downloaded file. And because I'm in the Azure Cloud Shell, I'm going to put the files into a folder in my profile so that as before, this will be available to me in future Cloud Shell sessions. I've already modified my path so that Draft and Helm are included. So next we get Helm set up, which is really simple. Just type in Helm in it, and that's it. This will set up both the client and the server side of Helm. And if I take a look at the Kubernetes UI, I'll see that Helm's server side tiller service has been deployed. Now let's set up the final dependency, an ingress controller for Kubernetes. Ingress provides a way to route traffic from the internet to services within a Kubernetes cluster. An Nginx based ingress controller is available via Helm. So let's install that. And then we wait for a load balancer to be created. We just need to wait for the external IP to be populated with an external IP address. So Draft uses a wildcard domain to make accessing Draft created applications easier. So I need to set up a DNS entry pointing to the IP address that's just been configured. So we have all of our dependencies in place. Now we just need to set up Draft itself. We'll download Draft, unpack the files, and as we did with Helm, let's place them somewhere persistent. Draft needs to know the URL and credentials for our Azure Container Registry instance. We can get the credentials from the Azure portal or from the Azure CLI. We need to place the credentials into this format. The username and password come from the credentials we just obtained, and I just add my email address at the end. And then we base64 encode this. Now let's get Draft set up. We run Draft in it and provide the URL for our Azure Container Registry instance, the Base64 encoded credentials, and the wildcard DNS domain. Now, that is the server-side setup complete. The whole point of Draft is to streamline the developer experience when working with Kubernetes. So, step aside server monkey, let's let the developer do their thing. I'm working from a Linux server now. Actually, I'm working from a bash on Windows session on Windows 10, but it will work just as well. There are a few dependencies to set up on the server-side, but for the client, it's much simpler. I need to have connectivity to my Kubernetes cluster, which I've already set up, and as with the server installation, I'll need to download and unpack the Draft files. So, download load, unpack, and place them where they can be found. And initialize draft. To make things simple, I'm going to use the examples in the draft GitHub repo. So I'm going to run git clone, and then in the examples directory, we have a choice. Let's go with Node.js. So in here, you can see we've got a very simple Node.js application. Let's get this into our Kubernetes cluster now. First, we run draft create, and you'll see that draft creates this as a Node.js application. Now we just run draft up. Draft is now running through the process of creating a Docker container for our Node.js application, including downloading a Node.js image and running npm. When it's finished, it will push the container to the Azure Container Registry. Once that's complete, the container will be deployed to our Kubernetes cluster. So this oddly named URL has been auto-generated, which means that everything is now deployed and ready to use. If I look in the Azure Container Registry, I can see the container that's been created. If I look in the Kubernetes UI under deployments, I can see that my app has been deployed to two pods, and under pods, I can see those two pods and can drill down to view more details about each pod. And if I hit that odd-looking URL, there's my app. But wait, that's not all. Let's just quickly flip back to my bash command 
command line. You'll see that draft is still running and says that it's watching local files for changes. Aside from making it easier to deploy an application to a Kubernetes cluster, draft also makes it easy for a developer to update that cluster as they continue working on their code. Let's go to another command line instance and make a small change to the index.js file of our Node.js application. Now I'm going to save this file and very quickly switch back to the other command line. And you can see that draft has spotted that the file has changed and has set about updating the containers and updating the Kubernetes cluster. From the Kubernetes UI, we can see the update in progress. And once it's finished, if I refresh the browser, here's my freshly updated Node.js application. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and follow me on Twitter for more.